I'm Uncle Scotty. It's the wake-up call. And if you've got arachnophobia, then you probably should stay away from the Tidemark Theater. You may have noticed there is a gigantic spider that has made a nest on the side of the Tidemark Theater. I'm talking a really big spider. I'm talking big enough to, to, to swallow a small airplane. Where did it come from? How did it get there? And better yet, is there an exterminator brave enough to try to get rid of this thing? We're going to find out more about that gigantic spider on the side of the Tidemark Theater from the man who put it there. We'll meet the real Spider-Man coming up. 99.7 The River, just 18 minutes before 8 o'clock on this Monday morning, January 7th. Yes, there is a gigantic spider on the side of the Tidemark Theater, and you can thank Jesse Toso for it. Jesse Toso um, is an artist. And Jesse Toso has created this gigantic insect. Actually, it's not an insect, is it? It's an arach. It's an arachnid something or other, right, Jesse? Ara- arachnid. Yeah. It's an arachnid. I don't know how I remembered that word, arachnid. I guess I studied in school harder than I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> the gigantic spider crawling up the side of the Tidemark Theater is created by artist Jesse Toso, and you may have actually witnessed him creating this piece of art over the summer at our chainsaw carving competition, which is so big on the ground when I witnessed you making it. Now when it's on the side of the building, you know what? It's still gigantic. <laughs> How did they get that thing up there with a crane, I would imagine, right? Yeah, we had a little man lift to help us uh, lift it up. Now, I, how, how heavy is that thing? It looks huge, but is it as heavy as it looks? No, actually, I hollowed out the body, so it's probably about 200 pounds right now. I remember when they first put this thing up on the side of the Tidemark Theater. It was one of the, I believe it was the Tidemark Theater's Facebook page, had posted the picture of it. And somebody actually commented on there, oh, my God, why did you put that up there? It's so frightening. My kids won't want to go to the theater now. <laughs> I th- to me, I think it's a great piece of art. It's definitely a conversation starter. What inspired you to do the giant, uh, the giant spider in the first place? Well, a couple things, but um, I've been thinking about it for a while. I like, I like the idea of uh, removing parts of the log to make it even bigger, like taking out of the space from the log and making it more three-dimensional. And I saw another carver, Chris Foltz from Oregon. He carved a a large praying mantis, and that inspired me to think about creating a large bug with big, (laughs) long legs. And (laughs) And I do remember watching you carve this. This thing actually comes apart. Does it come apart in, like, what, eight or nine pieces? Yeah, there are eight legs. Well, actually, ten legs. There's two little front ones, and the body is one piece. So I guess that totals 11 pieces. I mean, it's like creating a giant jigsaw puzzle, right? So how did you – was was a lot of measurement involved before you even got started on it? It was a lot of planning. uh, It was a year of drawing and looking at spiders and figuring out how to get the pieces all from one piece of log. Yeah, and being a carpenter helps. I know how to use – you know, make joints. And my dad helped too, the engineering. (laughs) Well, it looks amazing. Now, it looks like you've done lots of other work. How long have you actually been doing the chainsaw carving? Uh, I did my first. In 2005, at the Transformations on the Shore. Was the first one the elephant, or was it the whale? Uh, the first one I did was a phoenix, and actually it had fallen apart. It fell over, and uh, <laughs> the wing cracked off. And, oh. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I've done a whale, a uh, giraffe, the giraffes that are in the community center. Yeah. And um, I did an octopus, and, and I'm actually looking into doing more figurative work uh, on my own here. just got a new studio, so I'm... Uh, Excited to get in there and start carving. Any possibilities in the back of your mind of what you'd like to maybe do this year for transformations on the shore? Uh, I've got a few ideas, but uh, we'll, we'll see. i got to keep it under lock and key. Yeah, half the, <laughs> half, the, half the fun of watching the chainsaw carving competition is the surprise at the end anyway. And your work is all on your new website. It is stumpartist.com, so you can actually witness a lot of the work you've already done. And uh, right. you also sell these pieces, so if people want to purchase some of your work, can they just go to your website? Yeah, they can have a look. Uh, I've got some uh, time lapse. I've taken some time lapse photography of uh, videos of uh, some of the pieces I worked on, so you can see the whole process from start to finish. I G- should have one up for the spider soon. Uh, I just got to put it all together. Jesse Toso, carpenter by day, artist by night. We look forward to seeing you again in Campbell River for the transformations on the shore this summer. And uh, if you can't wait till the summer, you don't have to because his giant spider is crawling up the side of the Tidemark Theater as we speak. Devouring anything with wings that gets in its path. Yeah, look out, Camel River. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing work. Go check it out. You can, of course, just head over to the Tidemark Theater and look. You can also, again, go to that website, stumpartist.com, and find out more about Jesse Toso, local artist who's done a, a, quite a job on the side of the old Tidemark. 
Also want to give a shout out to John Locke of Strategic Forestry Group. Uh, he set up John, or set, set up Jesse rather, with uh, two chainsaws, and he also flies them out each year to the annual Carva Palooza Chainsaw Carving Convention in uh, in Ontario. So there you go. And thanks to Jesse Toso, the creator of the Giant Spider, for joining us on the show this morning. Now you've met the real Campbell River Spider Man.